Welcome everybody to the Joe's Bot Podcast. Today's guest is none other than Mr. Fernando Fiore. Fernando Fiore, is, you might recognize him from a couple of items, uh, from World Cup Soccer, from Lente Loco, from Fuera de Serie. This is going to be a, a bilingual podcast, entre español y en inglés. Sí, señor. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Fernando Fiore. Uh, hello, hello, hello. ¿Qué tal? It's a pleasure for me to be with you today and with all your people, your audience. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very special week, a very special day. And I'm glad that we can share with you now. Fernando, vamos a empezar con esto. Fernando, que lamentablemente nos, nos dieron las noticias de hoy. Vamos a ver. Diego Maradona, widely regarded to be one of the greatest footballers to ever play the game, has died. In a statement from the Argentine Football Association through its president, Claudio Tapia expresses its deepest sorrow for the death of our legend, Diego Armando Maradona. You will always be in our hearts blue heart. It is understood that the 60-year-old football legend died of a heart attack. Uh, he had been discharged from hospital just two weeks ago after being admitted for emergency brain surgery to remove a clot on the brain. He was due to continue receiving treatment for alcohol dependency uh, on his discharge from hospital after a long history of drug and alcohol abuse. But... Así es, el 25 de noviembre de 2020 fallece Diego Maradona. ¿Cómo tus pensamientos, Fernando, con, con, con la pasada de Diego Maradona? Uh, well, um, I'm deeply sorry, obviously, because um, it's one of the greatest footballers in history. Uh, when, uh, when I heard the news that you just put the tape, uh, you know, it, it's, it's sad that it's, uh, that it's always linked Diego Maradona with the two different Maradonas, uh, like, I, like I call, you know, Maradona footballer, uh, like I said, in my humble opinion, and I, and I think that, uh, you know, millions and millions of people around the world agree with me, uh, probably, not probably, for sure, one of the best, for some people, the best, uh, you know, it's difficult to, uh, to compare, you know, footballers or singers or anything that, you know, they have to be from, def from different eras, because sometimes you are more exposed to one particular player or singer or politician or anything than another one from 100 years ago or 50 years ago. So, you know, it like, you know, we said it in Spanish, es odioso comparar, uh, because, if, you know, they are big in, by their own standards and by the standards of millions of people around the world. So saying that, it's a footballer and it's a, you know, and it's a person, a human being. So the tape that you just play, it will link, you know, okay, uh, we are so sad because Maradona is, is dead, but they have to add, Maradona had a lot of history with drugs and alcohol and, and so many other things. So unfortunately, uh, you know, that's his legacy. And, uh, and, and you can always, you know, discuss uh, where, you know, I mean, how you're gonna remember him. And, uh, and, and I accept all the opinions, you know, some people will say, I only remember him as a footballer and other people say you cannot separate the, the public figure, which is a football player uh, from, from, from his life, <laughs> obviously that he shows to the rest of the world. So for me personally, it's a sad day, uh, no matter what he did, you know, because it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of people that during their lifetime did good things, bad things. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the way it is, you know, no, nobody's perfect, nobody, you know, that I know in my lifetime live as a saint. Yeah. Uh, they usually, you know, they usually uh, people made mistakes. So I'm very sad. Uh, he was, uh, he was, you know, amazing on the field. 
and and that's the way I remember him today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, to our listeners, Fernando, you are from Argentina. Yeah, that's why today I, I'm wearing the Argentinian jersey in uh, Maradona's honor. One of, the, like I said, probably uh, the ones that I saw, probably the, the player that, you know, that, you know, he wore this jersey better than anybody else. Absolutely. And that's what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is like, unfortunately, that that news clip that I played came from uh, came from Sky News and they had to add that. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate because, again, like you said, we're, we're human beings. And I personally, I'm on that same level when we're, we're, we're talking about that. You know what? Human beings, we're not perfect. We don't we're not we don't live a perfect life. But no. nonetheless, when it comes to Diego Maradona, the football player, as you mentioned, there, there, the guy was amazing on the field. Is what I've seen. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think going back to you growing up in Argentina, was he already a football player while while, while you were growing up there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I I uh, I left Argentina in 1980. Uh, it was, you know, he was already. Uh, <laughs> He, he was disappointed that he didn't participate in 1978 in our World Cup that, that we won in Argentina because he was not part of the, part of the squad. Uh, mm -hmm. He was cut in the very last uh, moment. And, um, and uh, he wasn't part of that squad that they won the, the, world, the world Championship in 1978. But then the following year, he was the member of the youth Argentinian team in 1979 that he was a world champion. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, it, it was when, you know, we all say, wow, no, this, uh, this 19 year old player, which we already knew, like I said, from a couple of years ago, because, uh, because, uh, you know, he was already part of the mix of the, of the top talent in Argentina in the late seventies. Um, he, he became from that point on the player to watch and, uh, so I only saw him in Argentina until 1980, and then um, when when he moved to to um, to Europe, then I saw him play on TV on, during the World Cup in 1982, and in Spain, and then uh, again in 1986 when he was the man. Uh, although, like we always said, he got a he got a team behind him. You know, soccer soccer or football is not a is not a an, an individual sports it's not tennis when right. all the glory goes to Jokovic or Nadal or in my case in Argentina Guillermo Vilas or or Jimmy Connors you know uh football it goes to the whole squad uh, and you can be the star but you need also your your you know your teammates so 1986 was the pinnacle and um and then you know we suffered in 1990 I followed all his career I met him a few times uh uh, I'm laughing because uh, sometimes it was it went great. Some other times he didn't go as well. Uh, he he was a uh, yeah. I remember him. He was a uh, he was a uh, you know he could be a, a a lovely guy one day and he could be completely ignoring you the next. Uh, and and that was part of Maradona. So, uh, but I have a I have a quite a few anecdotes uh, with Maradona, and I try to always remember. Both of them, the good ones and the not so good ones. <laughs> and, they, 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 yeah, they were funny back then. They were funny. Uh, still today, are funny. And uh, and you know and uh, you know it's uh, when you you know when you at uh, that time and for me that I'm a fan. You know, before anything, before my career as a sportscaster or a, actually as a TV host as an actor, uh, I'm I'm a fan. I love I love theater. I love sports. I love football uh, probably more than any other sport. So I'm a fan first. So right. when I met him for the first time, it was like it was like a oh my god! Wow. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, this it, it was unbelievable. Much more than just trying to interview him. The same thing happened when I met uh, some Hollywood stars. You know, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger when I worked with him in a movie, or when I when I met uh, you know uh, LeBron James. You know, there there are people like you know besides that, uh, they they were huge. Uh, you know, for for me as a fan, they're they're just larger than life. And I got to uh, work with the Spanish uh, TV and I'm sorry, station. It, and I'm sorry. It's really good that sometimes you know when people 
uh, you know, meet me on the street. You know, you know, I said, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm meeting, I'm meeting a legend that I love since I was a yeah. little kid, you know. Uh, today in, in my Twitter, uh, it, it was a young girl who says, oh my God, I, I'm chatting on Twitter with, with someone that, you know, that, that I always admire. You know, and look, I have a, you know, piel de gallina because uh, it's, it's so nice, you know, when you are in a in, in communication business for over 30 years, uh, you know, and, and, and there are people that start watching me when they were five, six, seven, eight, ten years yeah, old with their family yeah. in Lente Loco, Fuera de Serio, whatever. And, and then they say, oh, my God, now in social media, I'm chatting with this guy who, for me, is a legend, you know. And, and to hear that about my person, that I'm a legend, you know, I'm so humble and, and, and thankful for that thing. Well, you know? and, Fernando, es que, es que hay que reconocer. We, we got to recognize that you've been in the business for so long. And you've you had some notable uh, highlights yeah. in your career. You know, when when I was going back through your through your biography through Wikipedia, you know, I I, I knew who Fernando Fiore was. Like I said, like I was mentioning, I I used to work for a Spanish uh, Spanish station uh, right out of college, and I Where? got to uh, with Univision KNBO. Eh, pero dónde dónde? In McAllen. McAllen, ah, Texas. McAllen, Texas. Okay, sí. I know McAllen. Yes, yes, so, yes. I have a lot of friends in Texas. I, 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 I did some work with a with a local station, the Univision local station, TV local station back in the days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to work with Marcos Valdez, el hijo, el hijo de, de loco Valdez. Claro, claro, claro. Um, and, and and through that understanding, working with people, you know, like to what other people say is, oh my God, I can't believe I see you on TV. To us, it's like. You're just a human being, like just like anybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me, I am very human being. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, pero es el, la gente que te reconoce, the people that are, that recognize you. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that that you had a lot to do with was Lente Loco. Tell us about Lente Loco, and and how that got started. I mean, porque yeah, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I'm a fan. <laughs> oh, well, very good, very good. well, 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 well. Lente Loco. I was, uh, I was the, um, the, the, the co-creator, co-founder, and uh, and host of the original one, mm -hmm. which it was only one year, uh, 1992 to 1993. Uh, the 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 character you mentioned was after our era, uh, okay. El Metillo, in and uh, and and this kind of that stuff. And uh, and I was, you know, I was part of the. Uh, of the Naughty Loco, which I also wear my dark glasses, uh, uh, and and, they, and they, it was a you know it was a funny take of the news on the Saturday Night Live. Uh, I was a huge fan of uh, of Chevy Chase when he was doing the original you know segment right. in Saturday Night Live, and 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 we did something uh, similar in Spanish. Um, Lente Loco, I, I was already on TV for four years at that time because I started in 1988. And Lente Loco was, uh, I would say, the big, big break. Um, it was the, the the first show of the new Univision administration. That was at the time when Televisa sold uh, Univision. And uh, we didn't know what our future would be because uh, for the first time, we were not going to be strongly connected right. to Mexican TV, you know, and, and the giant like Televisa. So back in 1992, we didn't know what was going to happen. And it was a lot of, lot of, uh, uh, of, of, you know, of scary moments because uh, many people thought that they might, you know, be completely different from that point on uh, since, uh, since uh, you know, Jerry Perenchio, which was a producer and big promoter, was the new owner, majority owner. So we didn't know where would be the direction. But fortunately for me personally and, and for my little group of three people, my, my great friends, uh, Carlos Marquez Sterling and, and, and Manuel Garresta, we were chosen to be the very first show of the new era. So we were completely pioneers and, and they, they trust us to do Lente Loco, a half an hour uh, candid camera show, which it was very difficult to produce here in the US because as you know, you might know, the lawsuits are completely different in this kind of shows that they are, they could be in, uh, in, in our countries, right? Oh, yeah. So it was difficult to produce the candid camera because anything, it will be, you know, uh, it could be ended up in a lawsuit against Univision. So we have to we have to get the candid camera videos from Televisa from another show, and we have to reshuffle and do our own pet project, which was completely different of any other candid camera uh, type of show that usually 
uh, you know, funny videos or candid camera, the original one in the 1950s or 40s, I don't know, 50s, I think it was, uh, and 60s and 70s, uh, they, uh, they were just presenting, a, a, you know, a funny candid camera video. Mm -hmm. For us, with Lente Loco, was a scripted show that we, we, we were doing comedy with a whole concept that it lasted 52 shows the very first year. It was an, a huge success and uh, top of the ratings. And, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, when, uh, when the first contract expired at the end of the first year, uh, for one reason or another, we didn't come to terms uh, with Univision. So the original producers and myself, uh, we all left. Uh, there were three of us okay. and, and we left. And, uh, and because of all the ideas and everything that it was created for Univision belonged to Univision and we knew that it was very amicable. And uh, we said, okay, you know, you know, we don't, if we cannot come to terms, then it's unfortunately that, you know, and, and, and we left. And, uh, and then they did another nine years with the same name of the program, but completely different. It, it transformed them into be a typical candid camera show where there were two hosts, uh, Raymond and Odalis, which used to work with us. They were just presenting, okay, here we go to this video. Here we go to this candid camp. Here we go. So it was a completely different story. It was a so we were very format, proud. Yeah. We were very proud of that first year of Lente Loco. I think it was, a, you know, when someone eventually will write the, the Hispanic television book, uh, they will have to include that particular show yeah, as, so a, as, a, and as a breakthrough. So, so you, you mentioned... You were there from 92 to 93. That was, that was the initial concept. Yeah, 92 to 93. 92 but to then, 93. Then thereafter, is that when you went to Fuera de Serie? Yeah. Then, uh, then uh, like I said, I, I left Univision for six months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, because they didn't renew my contract. So I, did, I went to do a, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. I went to do True Lies, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Uh, and Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, I was casted as a as an Arab, although my family is from Italy. But uh, they, they thought that I was looking like an Arab. So, and and it was good. And, and the people, you know, like, like myself, I laugh a lot of times because people say, "Oh, you weren't true lies." Yeah, but you were an extra. Probably you were there for a day, and and, and that's not the case. Yes, we were we were part of the gang of the bad guys, but we didn't do it only one day. We were for a full month. Right. So. I work under the direction of uh, James Cameron, fantastic director, yeah. which I have a lot of anecdotes with him too, especially one that is very funny. And, and I have the chance to work with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis and Tia Carrer for a full month. Uh, at that time, it was, the, it was the most expensive movie in the history of Hollywood. Yes. So it was a very good <clears throat> learning process. So yes, uh, you know, they didn't put my name at the end of the credits of the movie, but uh, we were not just extras. We were part of the film for a month, and uh, and all the guys that they were with me, we we took it very seriously, and uh, and it was uh, it was completely different of uh, of of some extras that they you know that maybe you work for ten seconds in a shot in a movie, and you work only for one day, and right. you in and out, and you never meet the director more than maybe for a couple of hours. Uh, for us, it was, a, it was a great experience. So that's what I mentioned it all the time. And, uh, and when I finished uh, the filming of that movie at the end of 1993, then uh, I was ready to, uh, to move to Telemundo with one of my co-creators of Lente Loco. And Univision uh, somehow knew about it. And they say, no, 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 you can't go to Telemundo. I say, well, you know, I'm a freelance right now. I'm a, right. I'm a free agent. So you didn't renew my contract. So, you know, technically I can go anywhere. I says, no, no, but you are part of the family. You should come back. And well, they offered me to, uh, to do the World Cup in 1994. And uh, talking about Maradona, that was his last, his last uh, World Cup. Uh, and, um, and, I, and I covered the World Cup for Univision in 1994. And at the same time, we developed Fuera de Serie, another breakthrough, another Fabulous show that top of the ratings. That one lasted for 40 years. Uh, it certainly went well for Sofia Vergara <laughs> career. Uh, uh, for me, it was great. For her, it was absolutely astronomical, fantastic. Because from there, 
uh, she got the chance to, uh, you know, she started with us. It was the very first job that she got. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, and then, you know, the rest is history, like I say, you know. <laughs> but, so. And that's, that's what we like to tell our listeners and our people that, you know, it's sometimes opportunity presents itself. And if you don't take opportunity, then, then too bad, so sad, you know, we knocked on your door and you chose not to take it. And, and I recall, I, I must have been, I must have been 10 or 11 years old. So for a that 10 was 11 year old. So you made yeah. that, you made a, you made a calculation. <laughs> you the, so, show, so, the show was, la- the show lasted from 95 to 99. What, what, I, what I was getting at, so for, for an 11 year old to a teenager, you know, as you get older, I'm loving this. I'm loving this because what is idea? I mean, yeah. Sophia, she, she was looking great at that time. Oh, she still do. Yeah. She still and, does. And, she still and, does. And, and you guys were using her back and forth because I, rem- I remember her uh, doing some segments where she was doing some soccer segments. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. Uh, we were we were part of a, again another another uh, great team, uh, very creative. Uh, Luis Blanco was uh, behind that one, and uh, and uh, and and myself and and some other people that that they were you know that we were producing the whole thing and doing the research. We have a nice and very nice group, and Sofia adapted very well because Sofia, like I said, she was very young back then. I was thirty four, she was twenty two, I think, twenty three. Um, she didn't have any experience on TV, so um, she she was adapting and she was listening and she was learning. Right. So so if we tell her to kick a soccer ball, she would do it. I mean, uh, everything you know, everything right. was everything was going everything was going great. The people love the combination, like a little bit of the Beauty and the Beast, and and everything for her was going right in the show. And for me, everything was going wrong. It was like an odd couple and and uh, and and two good friends going around the world. So it was a uh, I think it was a great creation, and uh, and uh, and and although they were only four years, I think it's a show that it will uh, lasting memories for millions and millions of people. Absolutely, and, and and to go on to that, it seemed like yeah. that that combination of like you mentioned, the Beauty and the Beast, was something that they continued with. I mean, I'm talking about Univision in particular. So uh, you know, thereafter, I, I recall. El Gordo y la Flaca started coming out, right? Yeah, that was, they were pretty much for the same, uh, from the same era. Um, uh, 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 they, uh, they were, they were doing, they were doing a live show, at, you know, they're still doing it. And, uh, and, and, and it was good. I think that they, they were on the air a little bit before us. And, uh, and, and now for us, it was, a, you know, like I said, it was a great show. Uh, Univision never before never after did another traveling show again it wasn't much more than a traveling show that the usual traveling show where there's a host around the world talking about the pyramids our show was more comedy into traveling or traveling into comedy however you want to put it but it it, it was more scripted it was more uh, you know i live in also uh it, it wasn't that particular a pattern after a traveling show that you already seen in, in English TV or in American TV or, or in any other part of the world. Um, you know, so it was a completely different story. And that's why the people also get engaged so much because they were, they were feeling that they were part of the family and they were traveling with us everywhere. Right. And, and that's a huge part when, you know, when you work with people, work is work, but when work turns into family, Oh I mean, yeah, that was great. That's great. I mean, that and it becomes it great. becomes it happened, a love. Yeah, yeah. It happened with Lente Loco, and it happened again with uh, with Fuera de Serie. Uh, I I have to say that then, República Deportiva was. We have a you know a, a great group again, but it, I you know I have to be honest. Uh, it wasn't the same for me. Uh, it wasn't the same type of, uh, of 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 family because it was it was a bigger group. It was more people involved. It was a, a live TV show every week. So it was more difficult to get that togetherness that we have when we were Lente Loco, that we were only three people. <laughs> you know, yeah. we were doing everything together. Sometimes we would, sometimes pretty much every week, we were working 18 hours a, a day, 12 hours a day. When, you know, and, and, and then, and then for the serie, we were traveling together for a week or 10 days. So, we, you know, we have much more togetherness. Uh, in República Deportiva, 
was more uh, the type of work that, you know, you have to go work and, and you are not with the same people every single day because it was rotating because it was a, it was a big show, two hour show every week with a lot of, with a lot of elements. And, uh, and, and then it, you know, it was a different thing. Although, although we, you know, we have some holidays together and, and vacations together with some of the members, but it was a, it was a much bigger staff uh, there. So for me, I think it was a different, it was a different thing. Hey, Fernando, uh, for, for our listeners, funny anecdote, Sofia Vergara. What was that, sorry? A funny anecdote of Sofia Vergara. Oh, Sofia Vergara. Well, the, the funniest anecdote, it was always that the people were so envious all the time and, and they tell me that, oh my God, I'm, I'm so jealous of you because you travel the world with Sofia and I'm sure that you go in the plane and you talk a lot and people... And, and the funny thing was that Sofia didn't like to travel much. Uh, she wasn't impressed of going around the world much. It, it, it wasn't her thing. And, uh, and as soon as she was getting into the plane, she was covering herself with uh with a little blankets on the plane and she wouldn't say one word during the whole trip <laughs> so so people people usually think oh my god what a wonderful experience to talk to sofia for eight hours going to spain or you know from miami or whatever right. and actually uh it wasn't the case sofia sofia it's a lovely person but but she's not Oh, she wasn't at that time <laughs> actually, you know, uh, into a lot of conversation. She was very young, so she was not much into politics or into football or into the things that I was or right, art, right. Like I was into it. Uh, she was more like a twenty-something-year-old girl that was more into another things that you know that uh, you know. <laughs> so it wasn't like we were sitting every night uh, talking about life. Uh, it, it, you know, we were having fun, <laughs> and like I said, it was like a family. Sofia, and the we were a family, <laughs> but she was like a little, yeah, she was like a little sister. It, it, it was yeah. not, a, you know, and the people thought that, oh my God, it, like, it's probably, you know, they, 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 uh, they spend a lot of hours talking and, and how interesting. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. Oh yeah. So, so 2020 has brought us a bunch of things that yeah. we don't, it's been a terrible year. 2020 has been bien terrible. Sí. Um, con la, con la, con la, cuando iniciamos, este, iniciamos con COVID en, en marzo y hicimos lockdown, right. cuarentena, sí, sí. quarantine. So, so, how have you adapted uh, to a quarantine life, Fernando? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, like I said all the time lately, it's, a, it's not like a, for, for me particular, it's not like a reinvented. The word you say is more likely you adapt. To the things you know some people are, oh we have to reinvent ourselves uh, you know it's difficult to reinvent yourself you know you are right. what you are uh, you have to for me it was more like adapting to things you know and uh, um, I have to say that it was a huge change I, I never spent in my 60 year old life uh, so many months without traveling without going to the airport uh, you know I came back from from Spain right the day that it was declared a pandemic in uh, March 13, uh, 12 actually. And, uh, and, and I haven't been in an airport since then. It never happened in my life, you know, for my line of work and uh, before, before TV, I was, you know, I was also, I graduated in, in travel and tourism. So I was a tour guy. I traveled around the world. I, I traveled around the US. I was always, uh, you know, on a bus, on a plane, on a train. Uh, on a car going somewhere, you know, uh, you know, and, and it was itching when I was uh, at home more than six, seven, eight days in a row. This year is completely different and I don't regret it. You know, it, it, it was like a sabbatical, you know, I say, okay, I don't need the passport this year, <laughs> you know, from March on. Uh, at, right now I'm start to getting a little itchy and I, and I wanted to go back to Europe and I was working in a great project right, at, right when the pandemic hit us. It was a great, fantastic project with Bean Sports, the, the sports network that they have, La Liga Española. And I was going to Spain every other month and everything was going fantastic. And then all of a sudden, we have to stop that project, uh, the Golden Ticket project, which I, I really missed. And, um, and, and, but then again, you know, I, uh, you know, you can sit down and complain about it. You can sit down and, 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 and bitch and complain over everything that went wrong this year, COVID, uh, the, the, the hurricanes, 
uh, the presidential elections, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the yeah, the, yeah, the fire, the, you know, the fires in the California, fires in, uh, in California and uh, around the world. Right, Australia. Uh, you, yeah, you can, you can complain all up, you know, about all that, but sometimes it's difficult to fix it from, from, uh, from your position, or you can try to, like Thanksgiving, just trying to think what were the positive things, although it's difficult to find it this year. And thank for that. For me, it was an it was a new era. I, I start I start to work with my MLS team, the Inter Miami, the Debbie Beckham team. I, I I'm part of the English broadcasting that, that we did every single game, uh, which was a new experience and it was great. Um, I did a TV show for Central America, for Honduras and El Salvador from home. Uh, it was a great way to connect with uh, with my hermanos Centro Americanos. Uh, uh, I know I, I start to to write my second book, uh, which was also fantastic. I have to get a little break because then I was getting too busy and I couldn't uh, dedicate so much hours to write right. to write that. But then I, I kept working on radio. I have a, 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 um, a, a sports and, and and casual life capsules that. We, uh, we sell around the country to different stations and Sirius FM, XM. Uh, so I'm busy, I'm, I'm very busy and, and, I go, and I go to the beach a lot because I live right, right by the beach. So uh, uh, it, it went fine. I'm, I'm so sorry about all the people that got sick, that the people that, that lost family and friends and, and, and um, quarter million deaths only in US is, is, is tragic. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, like I said, uh, you know, we didn't know. Nobody knew that it was going to be a, a pandemic this size. You know, and, and, and you know, and unfortunately, you have to deal with it. Yeah, you know. So 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 now you're working with the English Soccer League. Is that am I correct in saying that? With uh, the MLS. With the MLS. Oh, with the MLS. Okay. Um, so how? I mean, I, I see it where they're having games but there's no fans yeah very and difficult so how important are the fans to the game of soccer oh well like i said i think i think fans i think that you know in any sport is players and at this pretty much this a little bit below the players are the fans <laughs> i mean because without players you have no sports obviously Right. And, and you can see that without fans, you still can have a sport. So I have to be honest. I mean, you cannot put the fans on top of the players, but the fans are right there. Uh, the difference is between fans at the stadium consuming that thing live, you know, and in presence, and the fans consuming the, the same thing on TV and on, and on, the, on, on the phones. Um, so, you know, without, without the fans live, uh, obviously, the sport will not disappear, but but it's a, it's a huge loss. It's a huge loss, not only financially, but uh, it's also a huge loss for uh, for the feeling of the sport, for the for for the feeling of a theater, of a movie theater, or a live theater. You know, right. uh, live concerts. I, I see a lot of streaming live concerts, rock concerts. I'm a, I'm a rock concert fan, uh, huge fan, and and I watch some you know concerts, streaming concerts. It's not the same. Yeah. Not even no, if you it's not put the same the, for us, the fans, and it's not the same for the it's not the same for the performers. And not even if you put the virtual reality goggles no, on, no, right? no, it's, no, 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 it's not no, the same. It's not the same. I was just talking to my wife earlier this morning, and we were watching. Uh, the but but your wife, but your wife was right. Yeah, she she's is. She's, right. she's always right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we were talking and we were listening to the Doobie Brothers concert, and we were watching. Oh, I love the Doobie them. Brothers. I love the Doobie Brothers, and. And I said, man, I miss concerts. And, and, and she goes, yeah, me too. You know, when are we going to go? Well, I, I went to, I, in, in, uh, in my 40 years here in the U.S., I went probably to over, I would say, 5,000 concerts. And I have oh. the tickets. I have the tickets for, for, <laughs> for pretty much most of them. So wow. uh, I, used, I used to go right before the, 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 the COVID and the crisis, I used to go sometimes two, three times a week yeah. to different concerts. I could go, I could go, you know, one day to see a Steve Miller band and, and two days later to see uh, Argor Funkel and, 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 and three days later go to see uh, ELO 
Um, so, uh, you know, for wow. me, it was, for me, it was, uh, something that, uh, you know, that I, I've been doing this for 40 years. So two, three concerts a week, you know, is nothing unusual for me. So imagine now for the last nine months, <laughs> It's been crazy, I would tell you. Like we're over here listening to the records, and we're we're having to re redefine what what fun is, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just so. On on that note, who is your who is your top five rock bands? Oh uh, well, that, that's you know ACDC, The Who. Uh, I love uh, you know. I love the classics of the eighties and seventies pretty much. So uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, you know, th those guys. And, and then a little more, if you want to go into more of the pop side of a uh, soft rock or, or, or more uh, light rock that, like I said, uh, the, the original ELO with Jeff Lynne and, and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And, uh, and uh, I, I know I love a lot of guys. It's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. <laughs> It's, it's too hard to even to listen. Say, but if, if you give me one, if you give me one that I have to listen for a couple of days nonstop, probably ACDC, I will do that. Wow, I, I'll do I'll do Pink Floyd, and on yeah. top of that, Pink Floyd, I'll do the David Gilmore album. The... Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, well, Gilmore and, and Plant and uh, all the different guys, you know, that they were doing, uh, you know, solo careers also that they have a, a, a amazing solo career. Same thing with a uh, uh, Super Tramp and Hodgson or or. Or ELO and Jeff Lynne doing solo, or you know, or or, or Genesis and and Phil oh, Collins, yeah, yeah. Uh, or yes, it's a, it, it, there are, there are a lot of guys. Uh, or Rick Wakeman with yes and his his solo career, it's it's a lot, <laughs> it's it's a lot. A lot of great performance. All, yeah. all of those all of those we mentioned, I saw them several times. Qué bendición que tienes. Oye, gracias a Dios. Mira, acá tengo, mira. Acá, si no me equivoco, a ver. Ah, sí, mira, acá tengo una de las cajitas con, para que veas que no estamos inventando. Mira, esta cajita tiene todos tickets de concerts de, de años de años. Mira, a vamos, ver, vamos, a, vamos, vamos a hacer una rifa ahí. Fernando Fiore va a sacar una. Mira, voy a sacar una aquí. Eh, también hay Argentina. Eh, Mason Square Garden. Ah, 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 no, este, a ver. No, este es, este es el ticket de lo que pagué. La, el, el recibo, de, el el recibo, recibo del de, ticket. El recibo del ticket, sí. Es el Customer Receipt, Mason Square Garden. A ver qué concierto era. A ver qué, qué hay por acá. Eh, partidos de fútbol que también hay. Miami Heat. Race Mania. Dennis de Young from Sticks. I, I, I love Sticks. Sticks, His Mr. Roboto. Yeah. His solo career is great too. The Moody Blues, fantastic. I saw them many, many times. Juan Luis Guerra, I, uh, I love, I love, I love Spanish. Charlie Garcia, my idol, Argentinian rock and roll. Mm -hmm. What is here? Heart. We, lo we lost your video feed. I got, I got. There we go. okay. uh, Heart with the Wilson with the Wilson sisters. Oh man! Uh, what is this? Uh, Robin Hood relief fund. Well, tons and tons and tons of tickets of different. That's, uh, a, different... that's a lot, man. I mean, Fernando Fiore, everybody. He he does not lie. He's got the tickets to prove it. Taylor I mean... Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Vegas. I was uh, yeah because I used to go to Vegas so much for the boxing matches so I watch every single every single performance in Vegas too. Uh, plenty. I well, let me see here. Oh, John Anderson. This is the singer for Yes in his solo, his solo career also. Anyway, like, like I told lot. you, tons and tons and tons and tons of tickets of uh, different concerts, all kind of music. Eh, eh, for... ¿qué, imp ¿Qué importante es un individuo, uh, the, you know, a young individual? How, how important is it for them to get culturized? Oh, well. Uh, you mean like an immigrant coming to a different country or? I'm, I'm talking like any individual in, yeah. any, in any country, how important is it for them to, to be aware of different cultures? Oh, well, that's, that's actually it's up to, up to the, the, the individual. Uh, some people, some people they, they think that 
it's fine to live in your neck of the woods and yeah. uh, and I respect that. And some other people like me want to know everything about pretty much everything in the world. I'm you know uh, I I like I love culture. I love I love art. I love uh, I love politics. I love yeah. uh, sports. I, you know, but I, I don't pretend that everybody will be like that. There are many people that they are not right. that they want just to have one side of the culture or and 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 they're you know happy with whatever they do in life uh, on their own job and, and and their own career um and and it's perfectly fine you know usually i i, I compare to myself that you now you can be that you can be a a, a a doctor a specialist that it could be you know a great brain surgeon and uh, and then sometimes you have another doctor that they're a general doctor not general practitioner that you know that they know you know they are not <laughs> there are those doctors that you go and they know exactly when you stand, what happened to you, but they they don't gonna operate your brain. They send you to right. the to the specialist, so they don't know exactly what happened with your urinary tract. They send you to the nephrologist. So uh, they are all kind of people that they have. They, oh, the same thing in, in in my in my line of business. You know, there are some sportscasters that they love only football and 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 they hate other sports. Uh, you know, and, and there are some other like us that, you know, you, I can sit down and watch uh, tennis or basketball or baseball, but probably I'm not going to sit down to see the whole nine innings of baseball. Right. And some people think that I'm crazy. How come, you know, the baseball lovers, they would love to see extra innings, you know, and uh, so it depends, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it does, but I, I, what I was getting The same at... thing with the culture, the same thing with the culture. Some people think that, you know, well, you know, one language is more than enough. Uh, I barely know Spanish and, 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 and I barely know a little English and, and I, you know, I, and when I was a kid, I wanted to learn French, but I'm not very good with languages. So uh, thank God I'm good in Spanish, but, uh, but some people love to learn different languages. What I was getting at Fernando is like, I got two children and I got a 12 year old and I got a nine year old. And to me, I mean, again, I, they are their own person. Cada, cada cabeza su mundo, ¿sí? Exacto, exacto. Cada uno tiene su, cada uno tiene, y los niños pasa lo mismo, tú sabes, eh, no les puedes, no los puedes eh, obligar tampoco. Correcto. A mi hijo, mi hijo tiene 18 años. Eh, cuando era chico, yo siempre dije, oye, si no, si, entonces, oh, your son has to be playing good soccer because you are all about soccer. I said, no, really, you know, he, he likes it. Sometimes he hates it. Uh, you know, I enrolled him when he wanted, and then he said, I, I don't like soccer because they score on me so many times. I don't want to yeah. go anymore. I'll say, okay, don't go anymore. You know, if you don't feel like it, and uh, and and especially I remember because I told him one day, I said, listen, you know, I'm I'm not playing my games on Saturday mornings with my friends because I have to take you to play. And if you don't enjoy it, then we're wasting your time and my time. Right. You know, so I say, if you don't want to go anymore, it's fine with me. I want to go and play. I'm still, I'm still playing now, and I'm 60 years old, and I love to go every Saturday to play. And and now my son Gianluca is a is a amazing fisherman. I mean, huge. He's a he's, he's an amazing fisherman. He knows everything about it, and uh, and you know he loved that. And I said, well, that's it. And uh, you know, and I barely, you know, probably I, you know, I fished maybe a dozen times in my life. And then I was into it because of him. Right. So, I mean, every, every, every child is going to navigate their waters of life, what we call life, right? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're just, yeah, yeah. We're, and, and it's fine. And that's fine. Let, let me get, uh, let me get the cable one second to get my battery on just in case. Um, yeah. But, uh, like I said, you know, you can, you can, you can push them. You can, you know, you can show them different things and, and, uh, and, you know, he might like the same things you like, or maybe not. <laughs> right. Right, but, but I mean, going back to la cultura, la cultura es, es algo muy impactante, muy, in, me, in me, my personal opinion. Yeah, uh, yeah, my personal opinion too. I, I, listen, I, I'm, I'm insufrible, insoportable, y, 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 y many, you know, and, and my girlfriend hates when I do that, but I'm watching a movie, uh -huh. and if I'm watching a movie and they mention a city, I have to stop the movie and, and go Google and see if I don't know the city, where the city is, how big is the city, just to get more into the movie. And I, and I wanted to know, learn about the place that I'm watching the movie. <laughs> I said, we can't watch the movie like this. I said, yes, we can. Because sometimes, you know, I love to watch Spanish movies. And, and sometimes they mention, you know, little towns. 
And I said, oh, I think I've been there, but how far from Bilbao? So I, I, I stopped the movie and, and, and just to uh, see where they say. So that's part of my uh, cultural craziness. Yeah, that reminds me of, I don't know if you recall this, on VH1, there used to be like, a, they would play music videos and then they'd have like these little captions, right? Of course. Uh, that was great. That was a great thing. Oh, yeah. It, it lets you know of what's going on, with the, the music behind. Just the other day, I had a, a guest on and and they're they're going through Nashville and they're going to try to get a record contract, etc. I love country music too. And and what he was telling me is like the behind the music. And I was I was telling him, man, I'm start, this podcast is starting to turn into a behind the music type of th situation. But but it's always good because people want to know the stories behind it. You know what you I see on that. TV is one thing, but what you see the struggle on how to get there, it's amazing. I love that thing. I love that thing, and and, uh, and I probably every time I you know I, I listen to a, to a, to one of my records or, or Spotify or whatever, then I I go and and if it's a band, I wanted to know exactly how it went from every member of the band. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Yeah, it, it's just you know trivia, trivia. Sometimes it's trivia, but uh, it's something that I enjoy. No, but it's the on, on my birthday. Usually, I'll I'll end up going to either Vegas or to Los Angeles. This past year, we had, right before COVID hit, we went to Las Vegas, and um, my wife, she knows I'm a big Def Leppard fan, so she got some tickets oh. to go see Def Leppard. I saw it. And in that concert, I'm singing every single song of, of, of the album and so forth, and she's like, how do you know all these songs? I go, babe, it's because <laughs> you have no idea. Like, Rick lost his arm in a car accident. And, <laughs> right, right. And, and, and right, I, right. My, my brother used to love listening to Joe Elliott and Def Leppard, and I grew up watching, and, and I'm giving her this history lesson all throughout the concert. I see como, como dice usted, and and I'm there like just telling her the tidbits of what I know. But we know this because we're we like to know. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, we're OCD in in a way, verdad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> some people don't care. I tell exactly the same to my girlfriend. I say, Mariela, you know this drummer used to play with somebody else, and you know. She doesn't care, and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It, it, you know, sometimes it's information that you know that that is relevant to only the ones who love a specific uh, topics. The problem with me sometimes is I love a lot of topics. That's yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Same here. I, I think I think that's anybody who who went into communications into into broadcast journalism. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I always knew that I wanted to do this. So. Yeah. I was I was having that conversation uh, a while ago where we were saying when I was in in journalism when I was working with Univision like I loved my job. I loved yeah. doing everything and just talking to people but it wasn't paying enough for me to stay in it. So I I pursued other avenues. I became a teacher. I'm now an, an administrator. I'm, a, I'm an assistant principal. And and that that does well, but when I had the opportunity to turn this into a podcast I'm enjoying every single bit of it because, again, oh, this great. is what I love to do. Fantastic, man. You Sometimes, know? you know, it takes a turn in life to reconnect with something, you know, that you love that you probably put them on the side because of family and kids right. and, and work. And, uh, and and it happens to, to many, many, many people. Yeah. So it, it, it's, not, it's, not in a, it's nothing unusual. Wait, wait, not moment. unusual to be... By <laughs> I, I got to see him, Tom Jones. Oh, man. I saw him live a couple of times. He's absolutely fabuloso. It me, is. Me encanta. Especially, especially because you know that true story, and he told in one of the, in one of the concerts, he's actually, he's a, he's a diehard rock and roll man. Uh -huh. The thing is that when he was very young, he was playing rock and roll, and he, he didn't go nowhere with his band. And then all of a sudden, uh, a producer says, oh, maybe, maybe your voice is for some romantic and uh, what's a pussy cat and, uh, and, and they make him switch. And because right. he was, he, you know, he was struggling as a, as, a, as a rocker, he started to sing, you know, pop songs and romantic songs. And, 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 he, and he's, he was huge. And he says, you know what? I, I'm going to keep singing this song because I, I'm going to be rich. Then Later in his career, he says, you know what? Now I have so much money and I have so much pain. So now I'm going to play whatever I like. Right. And, and, and I saw him playing rock and roll songs and, you know, and, and it's fine. You know, it, you know, sometimes you have to adapt because sometimes your dreams, uh, you have to put them on hold for a little bit in order to secure financially your career and your life. Right. And then 
when you got a chance, if you got a chance, which, uh, you know, sometimes it happens and you go back and do the other things that you couldn't do before. I see. Yes. You got, you got to put yourself in a position where you're not going to hurt yourself, rather benefit yourself so that you can move yeah. forward. Well, and yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you some people, some people, you know, and I know some of the people says, you know what? No, I, I, I want to do this. And, uh, and even if it's, if it's not going to be, uh, moving my career or he's not gonna uh, he's not gonna make me successful I don't want to do something else which is right. also very understandable and, uh, and, and and you know and you have to accept the opinion of some of the people for me like I said I, I know I, I always try to adapt uh, when I didn't get what I wanted to do on TV they, uh, they asked me to do news and I didn't want to do news but I knew it was a good move so I did news yeah uh, and then I went back to what I wanted to do. So, you know, it's a different approach. It definitely is. It definitely is. I, I sometimes wonder, like, what would have happened if Joseph Ah, oh, well, no, you can't. No, you, can't. No, no, no. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You move on. But, you know, like, but I see it's always a topic of conversation where you're like, man, okay. Yeah. Yeah, este. yeah, you can double guess. <laughs> Oye, Fernando, vamos a terminar esta este, este okay. serie en español. ¿Cómo no? Claro. Este, Fernando. Mejor equipo de fútbol. El mío, River Play de Argentina. El, el mejor equipo mundial. En la selección argentina, por lo, por, lo, por lo que me dio en su momento. Ahora hace 23 años que no me está dando mucho. El, el mejor equipo futbolística de la, de la liga inglés. Uh, Chelsea. Uh, ¿Y de la liga mexicana? El Atlante. <risa> Ay, tengo bastantes seguidores que nos va a decir hoy, el Atlante, no, hombre, ¿qué pasó? Está loco el tipo. Este. No, pero yo pido con mi corazón. A mí, claro. no, a mí el, 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 mejor, el mejor para mí es el que mejor juega, es el que mejor me llega al corazón. Ándale. Oye, y, y ahora el mejor. Y en la MLS es mi equipo, el Inter Miami. <risa> y ese mero. Ahora, y, el, y, y el, el jugador número uno del mundo. En, en la historia. Bueno, de los que yo he visto, como te digo, las comparaciones son difíciles, pero de lo que yo he visto, lamentablemente, justo hoy lo perdimos eh, físicamente, que es Maradona. Y tu último momento, este mejor momento de Diego Maradona. Eh, levantando la copa en el año 86. Fernando, fue un placer tenerte aquí hoy en mi, en mi podcast. Este, muchas gracias por, por darle, darnos el tiempo. Este, ah, okay. Un, un último mensaje para nuestros este, fans. No, nunca es un último. Siempre habrá una nueva oportunidad. Pero por ahora les digo que eh, tengan un great Thanksgiving, que piensen en las cosas positivas que les ha pasado. Eh, yo lo puse ahora en mi Twitter, arroba Fernando Fiore, y en el Instagram Fiore Oficial. Eh, eh, este año posiblemente sea un poquito más difícil buscar las cosas por las que tenemos que dar gracias. Pero si realmente piensas eh, vas a encontrar muchas cosas que a pesar de todas las calamidades que hubo este año eh, hay para agradecer así que que se cuiden mucho que sigan saludables eh, que se recuperen los que no están tan saludables y que tengan un, este, un excelente fin de año sea como sea este, tratar, de, tratar de ver las cosas positivas los espero en mi twitter arroba Fernando Fiore, en mi instagram Fiore Oficial me da mucho gusto estar contigo. Espero que la gente haya disfrutado, que disfrute de este podcast. Eh, si ha disfrutado este, del podcast, que se lo digan a todo el mundo para que lo escuchen y lo disfruten. Y si no han disfrutado del podcast, que no se lo digan a nadie para que los demás <risa> también lo, lo escuchen y, 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 y vean por, por sus propios ojos y oídos. All right. Well, thank you so All much, right. everybody. Again, once again, this is the Joe's Bot Podcast. Today's guest was... Fernando Fiore, you can follow him on his Instagram, on his Twitter, on his social media. In English, what was it again? Uh, in English, it's uh, at Fernando Fiore for the Twitter. And uh, for Instagram, it's Fiore Oficial, F I O R E O F I C I A L, only one F. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you again. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao. God bless you. Y terminamos. Muchas gracias, Fernando. Un placer. Bueno, querido. Muy amable. Muy amable. Gracias a Dios. Y ahí te mando el link después, luego. Dale. Muchísimas gracias. gracias. Ándale, adiós. Chao, Igualmente. Chao. Bye, bye. Y recomi recomiéndame ahí para que me manden 
para que me manden peticiones por camión. I, I will. I sure will. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh,